Hello, everyone. I'm Lei Jiewang, a second year PhD student from University of Washington, advised by Amy Dan. Today, I'm very excited to present my work, Hiccup, empowering non programmers to also executable governance policies in online communities. Today, millions of communities gather in online platforms like Reddit, Slack, or Discord. Just like offline organizations, these online communities also practice governance. They have various governance policies that articulate how the power should be distributed and how members should behave. In Discord, policies help prevent online harassment. In Wikipedia, they help resolve disagreement between its editors. Policies can further specify who have the power to propose new policies. There are diverse governance policies in online communities today, reflecting the complex norm within each community. In Wikipedia alone, there are more than 800 pages of policies and guidelines. Many online communities also learn from various offline governance practices. In contrast, many online platforms only provide a few governance models in their software, and predominantly, they use a raw permission model. In this model, admins and moderators have more power than regular users, controlling membership and content moderation. Some platforms do offer other governance models, like reputation or jury systems, but usually that's the only governance model available. As a result, online communities started moving away from the default governance model. Many communities choose to manually maintain and execute policies. However, this approach requires a lot of human effort, especially for large communities. This leads to a growing trend towards technical governance tooling. Communities use bots to help men then maintain and execute policies automatically. Take Wikipedia for example, there are over 1600 bots that help maintain community standards and regulate user behaviors. In Minecraft, a popular online game, every community has an average of 10 governance plugins. However, community norms are always changing and complex. In comparison, the variety of existing bots is still limited. The problem gets worse because these bots do not offer much room for customization. For example, auto mode is a popular tool for content moderation on Reddit. Moderators can set up regular expressions to approve or remove posts. But what if moderators want to use machine learning to better detect hate speech or send warnings to users? So, why don't communities just create their own governance policies if they want more customization? The challenge is that this needs knowledge of platform APIs and coding skills, an impossible task for non-programmers. Consequently, technical proficiency has become an insurmountable barrier to designing good community governance. Communities without technical developers are then forced to live with the default governance model. Non-programmers are excluded from deliberation of technical governance policies, a process where there should be no barrier to participate. What if we empower non-programmers to also executable governance policies they want? We have two main goals here. First, we wanted to make it easy for non-programmers to create good policies. Second, we wanted to allow users to create diverse policies. However, there's a tension between these two. If we make it easy for non-programmers, it may not offer enough flexibility for creating diverse policies. To solve this challenge, we draw inspiration from end-user programming technique and build a declarative language for authoring governance policies. While imperative language specify how to implement a policy in code, declarative languages focus on what policies you want without detailing how to reach it. With all this background, we now introduce Pika, a novel system that empowers non-programmers to author a wide range of executable governance policies. Here's a demo of the Pika. Imagine you are a community admin on Slack. Your community often uses a general channel to post announcements, so you probably do not want anyone to either rename that channel unless the majority of people agree to rename it. I will now show you how to use our interface to solve such a policy, a majority voting for channel renames. 
at the main author interface, we are first asked to see governor action for our policy. The left-hand panel showcases a list of actions currently available in PICA, including both Slack and Constitution actions. For our purposes, we choose rename channels. The right section lists action fields we can further specify. As we focus on renaming the channel general, we use the channel filters to narrow down the governed action. Then we are prompted to determine the governing procedure. The left-hand panel displays all available procedures we can set, from traditional ones like majority voting and the benevolent dictatorship to more intricate procedures. Now we select majority voting. Then we should configure the procedure settings. For instance, we wish for the voting to occur in a channel subject to renaming, with all the users from that channel being eligible voters. You can add further customizations to your selected procedures, such as sending notification to people who haven't voted yet. You can also leave this section blank. Then it's time to decide what actions happen when the procedure passes or fails. When the procedure passes, the governing action renaming channel in our case will be automatically carried out. In addition, we post a message to summarize the voting outcome. Note in the summary message, we can refer to the percentage of yes or no votes by inserting variables buttons. Similarly, you can have actions when the procedure fails. This concludes our workthrough of the authoring interface. I hope this demo gives you a sense of what PICA is. With this policy in place, if someone tries to rename the channel general, a voting message will automatically pop up and only approve the renaming if most of the people vote in favor of it. Before we dive deeper, let me first introduce the open source the policy care infrastructure that PICA is built on top of. Policy care enables programmers to implement governance policies in Python. It further automatically carry out these policies on their home platforms. By using policy kit, we can focus on simplifying the policy authoring process for non-programmers, while policy kit handles their execution. Here's an overview of the PICA system. At its center is an authoring interface that guides users to author policies using a declarative language. At the left, it fetches community information through platform APIs. To support expressive authoring, we implemented a library of policy components. And once a policy is authored, we compile the policy in declarative language into executable code. We have talked about our declarative language for many times, but what does this language actually look like? There are two important concepts in our declarative language, actions and procedures. An action refers to events a community member initiates, such as posting message or renaming a channel. Procedures decide what, whether action should be allowed. To provide more customization options to end users, we further break them down into modular components, and we call them custom action and custom procedure. Let's talk about custom action first. Suppose you want to govern the action when someone tries to rename the channel general. You should first select a base action to be governed. These base actions are the core set of actions facilitated by online platforms, like inviting a new user, posting a messenger, in this case, we choose renaming channels as a base action. To describe actions more specifically, we use filters to specify the details of a base action. They describe aspects like what does a message look like or who's a user that renames a channel. In our example, to ensure our policy targets the general channel, we use channel filters to narrow down the governed action. In a similar way, we break a governing procedure into modular components. Suppose we want to govern the action by a jury procedure. We start by choosing jury as a base procedure, which forms the backbone of a governing procedure. This concept is based on the observation that, despite there are various governance procedures available on online platforms, there are only a few fundamental ones commonly used, such as an action, dictator, or juries. On the other hand, different communities might still use the same procedure differently. For instance, a big community can find more jury members, while a small community cannot. 
We use procedure settings to describe the varying specifics of these governance procedures. Here, for instance, we can specify that we need three jury members and two yes votes. We can further customize our jury procedure by adding decorators, such as enforcing time restrictions on voting or notify people who haven't voted. Finally, we should decide actions that follow the outcome of a procedure, which we call executions. After users also the policy using our interface, we can see the resultant declarative language in JSON on the left. We then build a compiler to translate it into executable policies on the right side. In our workthrough, these modular components together consist of a governance policy. We call them policy components. They act as a bridge connecting programmers and non-programmers. Programmers are expected to implement policy components in code and define how can they be customized. This then allows non-programmers to author governance policies declaratively. To facilitate this communication between programmers and non-programmers, we make sure each category of policy component has a clear and a consistent JSON structure. <laughs> If our declarator language is a grammar of the pickup, then the library of the policy components is the vocabulary. As a starting point, we implemented a library of policy components to support many common policies in online communities. Here's a list of base procedures we implemented. Because our language is built in a modular way, programmers can easily add new policy components to this library. We then build a web interface to guide non-programmers to also executable governance policies. I hope all this gives you a sense of what PICA is, but what, how do these features resonate with real-world users? In our evaluation, we found that non-programmers can quickly learn how to use PICA to also governance policies, and that programmers can use PICA to also policies significantly faster than writing code. But the more important question is, is brassivity. Can non-programmers use PICA to author most policy they want? We talked to non -non 10 non-programmer community members, asking them to describe the policy they wanted and articulate each in PICA. We found that our library of components can support a significant number of policies non-programmer participants proposed. Among them, many policies involve a voting process that regulate who can post a message and how should moderators be appointed? On the other hand, some policies automate repetitive governance tasks. For example, always invite a moderator when a new channel is created. Other policies can be described by our declarative language, but require the authoring of new policy components. However, there also exists a small set of policies we cannot support. The limitation arises from our focus on event-driven rather than state-driven governance. An example of the former could be when someone posts a message, while the latter could be when someone has been enacted for a month. PICA only supports the formal as we listen to the platform webhooks and get informed when some events happen. However, the latter requires us to actively monitor how long a user has been inactive, a flow different from the webhook events. In the long run, our ambition extends to creating an app store for governance. Platforms, programmers upload policy components to the app store, and then communities can use them to author governance policies. In addition to policy components, should also provide a collection of ready-made policies or even governance models. The success of such an app store also depends on further empowering programmers to author policy components. We plan to build a policy IDE and a sandbox environment in the future. In this work, we do not have the chance to explore how PICA can guide non-programmers to also good policies. In fact, you can create completely nonsensical policies in PICA, for instance, kicking someone out of a channel as soon as they are invited. We trust in the expertise of experienced community members to also good policies. In the future, we should also explore guidelines on designing good policies and provide protocols for policy deliberation. Here's a summary of my presentation and a QR code for the paper. Thank you for listening.